This is CPROS U coming from Heatsink Labs in Mesa, Arizona. And I'm going to show you a project I've been working on. So, my idea was to provide a way to uh, have a uh, Atari 2600 and a way to have a complete development system in order to make your own 6502 assembler code. So, this is a supercharger cartridge, and you know, it was originally made so you they could have uh, games actually on audio cassette that you would then play into it. This has three 2K uh, you know, RAM chips in it, um, you know, so three different banks of 2K that you can access. And uh, then you can just plug it into your Atari, uh, turn it on, and then you know, fill up the RAM and you have a game running. So we're going to be using uh, this uh, 386 over here. I assure you it is a 386 even though it says uh, 486, it's been downgraded, uh, as the uh, platform that we uh, do our development from. So, for giggles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download an assembly file, 2600 assembly file made by this guy, and uh, we're going to uh, put it on a floppy, I got a USB floppy drive here, and we're going to import that the old fashioned way using sneaker net into the, uh, into the computer. So. Let me just download that first. Copy that over. Pull up our floppy drive. The nice thing about the USB floppy is you'll be able to take your games off of the PC and, you know, take it back with you and put it on something a little modern, more modern and run it on an emulator. So now we got our floppy. Let's uh, not put it all the way in, but let's uh, turn on the computer here. Let it boot up. And so this is a 386 SX 33 with a 387 math coprocessor I had to install. Uh, for one of the various programs that we need to use for our development platform to work. Um, so it's got 6 megs of RAM and a Sound Blaster 16 audio card, which we'll also factor in. So let me get to our scratch directory first. And we're going to go and get our Hello World pr uh, program off floppy. Make sure that it's there first. Yep. All right, now that that's over, good to go there. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually compile that, um, that assembly file into a binary, but you know what, let's open it up first and just make sure that everything is there. Okay, here we go. Cool. All right. And you can see that, you know, this is not trivial. So this is how they have had to do it. So let's go through the code really quick. I haven't decided if I'm going to put a different text editor uh, for DOS on this. Um, I want to do it all in DOS, though, if at all possible. So we've got our assembly file, we need to then compile that into a binary, we're going to use DASM for that. And so, we need to do, we need to use the F3 tag, and actually, yeah that's right. Just want to make sure, F3 and then O for output. Okay, now when we do a directory, we've got our hello ASM and our hello.bin. And you notice our bin is, you know, 4096. I guess hello world, they need 4K for it, because, you know, don't know why, but our, our combat bin is only 2048 bytes, you know, K bytes, so 2K bytes. Eh, not sure why they couldn't fit hello world in the same space, but I digress, whatever. Um, so we now what we need to do is we need to use another tool 
to take that and turn it into something that we can output with our sound card, like a wave, a PCM wave file. So we need to use uh, make waves. So and we need to tell it that we're going to be dealing with a you know a supercharger file that we need to do. So T is for type, S is for supercharger. And we want to make that into so type supercharger hello.bin to hello.wave. Believe that's right. Yes. So we've got converting one file for use of supercharger. It says it's good to go. Now if we do a directory again, we've got our hello assembly, our hello bin, and our hello wave. So we've got all three files, and you'll notice that the wave file is obviously much bigger, but Eh, doesn't matter. So now, we need to get our Atari set up. So let's get that down there right now. Plug our 9 volts in. Get our RF, and I've got a uh, RCA to Type F uh, adapter here that we're using for the moment. Makes things easy. Power on our TV set. Okay, come on. Should be on channel two. And grab our supercharger. We're going to plug this into the output of the Sound Blaster 16. Okay. Rewind tape, press play, it says. Well, I'll press my computer. I really don't need the joysticks, but I'll throw them on there anyway. Okay, so we've got everything ready to go. Now that all that's left is to get both in the shot here. And we're going to use a XTC player for a DOS. And here we go. And there we have it. Everything done from the PC. So we get our assembly code. We take that, we compile it, we get a binary out of it. Then we take the binary, make a wave out of it, and then we play it all within DOS, all within, in fact, MS-DOS uh, version 6.22. And uh, it's good to go. Perhaps, uh, We'll get the uh, development for the Atari on the Commodore 64 next. But this way, along with the uh, manuals we have, you'll be able to come down to our hacker space and if you so choose, make your own Atari 2600 game.